Yo, 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 what's good, man? It's Devontae Graham, man. I just wanted to say, hey, I appreciate y'all for following Gun Dacker's channel, man. Y'all make sure y'all follow him, tell a friend about him. He's the man. What's up, guys? Gun here. Happy Friday, January 1st, 2021. We've made it. I'm glad to see you guys on this side of the new year. That usually means you had a safe but fun night, responsible night. And that's all I asked from you guys yesterday at the end of the stream. And now it's time to keep the grind going. NBA month of January. We're here on uh, daily basketball. We've got the Martin Luther King slate coming up uh, in a couple weeks. That's always a fun grind, a lot like Christmas. Uh, and then we have the closing week and the playoffs for NFL. So there's still plenty of daily fantasy to be had. Keep you guys warm and excited while you're indoors, uh, grunting out the winter. And then, of course, uh, the social distancing of life. Uh, I'm Gun, twitter.com slash Gundacker Sports. If you've never seen this channel before, I put up a lot of DFS content. Right now, we are in peak NBA season. Uh, and what you might expect from this channel is a lot of daily live streams. And typically, the schedule is if there's uh, more than six games, you might expect me on the air at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on the channel. And if it's less than eight games, you know, six or less, um, you might expect an hour later. So like a 4 p.m. Eastern. Today is a big slate. So we're going to be live at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And I definitely encourage you guys, invite you guys to come join the live stream. Have some fun with live chat. Uh, and we'll have some more uh, updated news throughout the day uh, about the slate. And these bigger slates get very news intense. If you like what you hear uh, and you want to go above and beyond to support the channel past the the applaud button or anything like that. I actually have a premium uh, content section at rundfs.com. I spearhead the NBA, the NFL, and the baseball content over there, including my proprietary spreadsheets, uh, which include projections, index portals, my personal player pools, stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, we have the rundfs.com VIP uh, Discord where you guys can jump into a 24-7 uh, premium Discord channel, or server rather, uh, and every day before lock, uh, we do a two-hour voice chat. And you guys can jump in that voice chat, chop it up with us, or just listen in, type questions in chat, whatever it is. Uh, I've said time and time again, this is a Discord that's all-inclusive. There's so many different cultures, ages, and bankroll uh, style of play and bankroll uh, sizes. Um, just a couple weeks ago, about a month ago, always be placing one the millionaire maker NFL, uh, and he's he's a millionaire lurking in the Discord. Um, 18's one hundred k, Jake's one hundred k. We've got a bunch of big hitters throughout the season. A couple of days ago, what three days ago now, I went. Uh, almost 19k on Fandle, including this 15k first place, and then the $9. Um, that's not flexing, it's just saying, hey, we have people over there that have a formula for success, they know what they're doing, uh, and there's always someone to learn from, uh, or someone to uh, guide and coach along. Uh, whatever it is that's your passion, we definitely invite you to come be part of that at rundfs.com. Today's video is going to focus on some of my favorite core value plays on FanDuel. We've been giving DraftKings a lot of the core play love. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked for um, a FanDuel-specific video. And sometimes I want to do both. But today, limited time holiday, I'm just going to do FanDuel. But a lot of the, the research uh, and value concepts of uh, these guys I will talk about uh, really apply to their DraftKings prices uh, as well. Um, so kind of think that in mind if you're just here for some DraftKings content. You can you can transfer a lot of this to DraftKings as well. It's going to be a big slate on DraftKings. So uh, I definitely implore you guys and encourage you guys to uh, stay connected uh, with the news throughout the day. Um, I think Fantasy Labs NBA on, NBA on Twitter, that's a great account to follow to keep you up to date. Uh, and then, of course, in the Discord we'll have 
uh, automatic updates as well. So a quick glance at today's slate. Um, we've got Boston and Detroit, 215 total, 9.5 points spread in favor of the Celtics. I think Blake Griffin, I saw, had an O tag on him. Um, Memphis and Charlotte, this is probably my favorite to uh, total game stack, even though the um, total is meager. 218.5 total, 4 points spread in favor of the Hornets. I love this game stack. I think there's a lot of pieces that uh, can hit value individually at their price points. We're going to run back the Atlanta Hawks and the Brooklyn Nets. What a game they had the other day. Uh, 245.5 total, that game uh, I think hit like 280 the other day in regulation. So a lot of eyes will go right back to that game, rightfully so. We got Minnesota hosting the Wizards. I believe Westbrook's out. Uh, San Antonio and the Lakers. Lakers seven point favorites on a 231 spread. The Bucks hosting the Bulls. The Bulls have been hit to, with um, a plethora of guys that will be out uh, for COVID um, related issues. The Bucks are 14 and a half point favorites there. Uh, so a really, really big spread to deal with. The Clippers and the Jazz. Jazz night two of a back-to-back. 224 total, three and a half point spread in favor of the visiting Clippers. Golden State Warriors hosting the Blazers. Blazers, four points uh, favorites and a 231 spread. Don't have totals for the Denver game. Um, and Minnesota in some spots. So uh, that's a quick, uh, at a glance, uh, peek at today's slate. Uh, now let's get into the uh, FanDuel uh, player pool. So what I want to do here is I'm going to give you one of my favorite plays at each position. One point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, uh, and center. And my goal here today is to not tell you um, to play Giannis or Luka or, or AD or Nikola Jokic, right? Like those are studs of slates that uh, you guys don't need me to hype up. I want to tell you some of my favorite uh, value plays on the slate. Um, and it looks like my most expensive value play is 6600 So I'm going to keep it cheap. These are going to be fillers throughout a lot of my lineups tonight that I think should uh, easily exceed their value um, from what they're priced at uh, and help me uh, script around them, uh, per se, right? A lot of times these are the grunt work guys to go get me, the Jokic's and uh, Luka Doncic, guys like that. Um, so let's just jump into it. Uh, point guard position, I'm going to start with Raul Neto. This is a guy that's probably a much, much more obscene and bigger value on DraftKings. Uh, but it looks like Russell Westbrook is going to continue his load management plan to rest uh, on one side of back-to-backs. And since this is night two of a back-to-back -back he played yesterday, expect Raul Neto to lace him up and play starter minutes here. He played 32 minutes against Orlando on December 27th. That was night two of the back-to-back. -back. Put up a huge 41.3 fantasy point night. 22 real points and uh, peripherals to boot to get him there. Uh, he's been pretty, um, pretty uninspiring in years past. Uh, so I do think there is a range of outcomes where where Neto can just be 20 to 30 fantasy points. But it does look like an opportunity at minutes will be there for him. Uh, so at 4,400, I'm going to be an investor, but I'm going to be an even bigger investor over on DraftKings. Uh, behind Neto, you might look at a guy like Ish Smith for deeper tournaments. Uh, he's a little cheaper on Fandle. Um, in that second game uh, against Orlando, he played just 15 minutes. Uh, but he's a guy that might push 20 minutes on an average day and might be a cool leverage pivot to Neto. But for now, I'm going to lean Neto. I like the matchup against the Timberwolves. Should be a pretty low defensive game. Uh, and I'm going to have some other pieces in this game that we'll get to. So we'll start with Neto for value. I don't think he's going to be a secret. I think a lot of people are going to understand uh, Westbrook's out. I do want to emphasize that I love Bradley Bill here. I think we've seen this spot for Bradley Bill in the past. Um, he is very expensive on DraftKings at 9.5K. So he has to do a whole lot. Uh, but on, on DraftKings, a little bit cheaper. Um, I think he's a, a fine target, especially using some of these value pieces. Let's talk about that shooting guard value play I like. it, And I'm going to give you Dylan Brooks. So I'm going to uh, put an aesthetic to this one. Dylan Brooks is 6.6K against the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, one of the reasons I like him, or, or the main reason I like him, uh, Memphis is going to be without John Morant and DeAnthony Melton uh, for a while. So I'm going to go to the on-off court tool over at Fantasy Labs. And I'm going to put Dylan Brooks on the court. Um, just just him alone. I'm not going to go too uh, crazy here. Uh, put Dylan Brooks on the court. I'm going to take off Jaron Jackson. I'm going to take off uh, John Morant. 
while I'm while I'm here, I might as well take off the Anthony Melton and just run it as is. And this is going to look at last year's numbers first. This is what I have. Uh, and in 45 games of sample size, 154 minutes, Dylan Brooks had a 33.4% usage rate um, with a 15.5% assist rate. Uh, and those are two numbers I like to see a lot. Now, fantasy point per minute, under one. But if I can put him at this price point and maybe put him at 34, 35 minutes at just under a fantasy point per minute, knowing there's potential for more considering the matchup here against the Charlotte Hornets, um, I'm a buyer. I'm all about some uh, Dylan Brooks here. I do think um, his shot volume could exceed 20 real shot attempts today. Uh, so I'm a big time believer in Dylan Brooks. And I said at the top of this video, I love this game stack in general. So I'll pause for just a second and talk about that game stack. Uh, but look at the prices on the Memphis Grizzlies. Dylan Brooks is 6.6K. Kyle Anderson has been um, decent usage, but also very high point per minute. I do think he's been super efficient, maybe shooting wise, but I like him quite a bit. Um, I do think you can go up to um, Jonas Valanciunas has been, I think, 1.2 uh, fantasy point per minute dating back to last season without some of those people. Matter of fact, I'll double check uh, since we have that open. E J Val, uh, 22 point percent usage rate, so about a, a fantasy point per minute, it looks like, as well. Um, so I like him quite a bit. J Val, you got to go up there and get, but the Memphis Grizzlies side is very stackable, and even uh, Brandon Clark, somebody. I can certainly get behind it. 4,800 has 30 fantasy point potential in this matchup. And then if I'm running it back, I know LaMelo Ball and uh, Bridges did their thing. Um, but I'm going to talk about a couple of pieces I like to run it back with. But I just think it's a very economically and financially sound uh, full game stack to get a piece of it. I think it's one of my favorite spots to be in. Anyway, Dylan Brooks, my shooting guard, uh, core value play of the slate. Let's move over to the small forward spot. Um, so I thought about talking about Kyle Anderson here, but I thought it was a little cheesy, a little cheap to just stick there. Uh, the name I'm kind of leaning here is Otto Porter. Stay with me here. Otto Porter is four thousand four hundred bucks on FanDuel. It's about a thousand cheaper than his DraftKings price. Uh, Ryan, Archie Diakono, Chandler Hutchison, Larry Market, and Tomas Sadoransky are all out due to um, COVID-related issues. Um, and I do think Otto Porter has to pick up uh, minutes. Regardless, I know it's a 14 and a half point spread, um, but since they're starting um, Pat Williams, Otto Porter has to come off the bench here, and I think he has to fill minutes no matter what. He's seen 29 and 30 minutes last two game against the Washington Wizards. Wizards are poorest defense team. Yesterday, he really showed his potential uh, ceiling at 55.9 fantasy points, uh, and this is a game that was not on a uh, slate to play. I think it might have been a showdown on DraftKings, so maybe that went a little bit under the radar, but this is a guy I do think picks up some scoring, and if it's uh, the uh, bench versus bench, Otto Porter's got just about as much shot as anybody, and if for some reason the Bulls keep it close, if we look back to last season, uh, three pointers against the Bull, or excuse me, against the Bucks, uh, was kind of what we targeted. Guys that can shoot with a high uh, efficiency from behind the arc. If you look at his career numbers, um, this season alone, uh, Otto Porter shooting about forty-four point four percent. Very small season, small sample size, but it's not unlike Otto Porter to shoot with ridiculously high efficiency, 38.7%, 37%, 49%, 44% in a decent sample size, 77-game season with the uh, Wizards, 43%. This guy could legitimately be a 40-plus percent, uh, three-point uh, percentage shooter, and he's going to take a decent amount of attempts. And I think in this game, you up the pace, you up the stress of playing from behind. There's a great chance that Otto Porter could have, you know, 18 shot attempts. That might be bullish, but he could have 18 shot attempts, and half of those could be from uh, behind the arc. So I do like uh, some tournament value shares of Otto Porter, um, and I just think there's a lot going his way to solidify minutes and solidify uh, the need to use what his strengths are. Uh, when you lose guys like Larry Markkinen, um, Chandler Hutchinson, some of those forward minutes as well, uh, and then, of course, him coming off the bench. I just think there's a lot of reason to like it, what Otto Porter can do at this price point. Now let's go over to uh, the other side of the Memphis-Charlotte game that I'm going to mention in this core. I'm going to talk about P.J. Washington. He's 6.3K on 
FanDuel. So his price really has not risen. But the two games I want to uh, focus on are the Brooklyn game and the OKC game. 29 minutes against OKC, uh, 34 minutes against Brooklyn. Um, the Hornets have suffered the loss of Cody Zeller. He broke his wrist, I believe, in the first game. And what we've seen since then is Bismack Biombo is their starting center, but they're staggering minutes when possible with P.J. Washington. Washington's now playing uh, backup center uh, and getting a lot of run at center. So what that's going to do for Washington is going to give him some better um, high percentage shot attempts, but it's also going to increase his rebound uh, attempts. The game against Dallas, uh, if you're just game log watching without context, uh, is sour. 17 minutes, but he had 5,000 those 17 minutes uh, and the Hornets were blowing out the Mavericks. So uh, two uh, uh, two things that you really hate in, in DFS or NBA DFS were happening, a blowout and foul trouble. Should he stay out of foul trouble here against the uh, Memphis Grizzlies? Or excuse me, yeah, against the Memphis Grizzlies. I think he's in a great spot. I think 34 minutes in a neutral competitive game is uh, plausible. And I think the speed, uh, the tempo should be up uh, with the Memphis in town. Maybe don't run as fast without John Morant, but there's still potential, I believe, for P.J. Washington to put up over 40 fantasy points. So I'm going to add him as one of my core value plays of the day. And that's going to leave me with one spot, the center spot. And uh, for me, the guy I want to talk about, even though I love playing Nikola Jokic, he'll be one of my favorite centers again because I keep getting him at 15 or less percent owned. Um, the theme of this video has been value. Guys, I think, can exploit their price point. Uh, maybe they weren't supposed to be this price. Um, if the algorithm or people that were approving pricing really digested what was going on, I want to talk about Thomas Bryant. Stay with me. 5,800, essentially another 6K player. Um, I'm going to pull up that on-off court tool for from Fantasy Labs, and I'm going to pull up the Washington Wizards. So uh, we're still on last season, right? So on the court, I'm going to put Bradley Beal. I'm going to put uh, Thomas Bryant. And I think that's all I want to check. I know Rui Hachimura came back. He's somebody that I don't really look at to be like an elite rebounder or anything like that. But just as is, just running this as is, Bill and Thomas Bryant on the court last season, Bradley Bill had a 33.5% usage rate, uh, and uh, Thomas Bryant had an 18.2% usage rate. However, Thomas Bryant was active enough with a near 16% rebound rate uh, that he was 1.2 fantasy point per minute. He led the team in a rebound rate. Uh, and I think if we fast forward to this season and just kind of think about the the new man in town, right, Russell Westbrook, what he has done uh, to this team. Uh, right now, if we uh, leave those guys on, I haven't touched Westbrook yet. Uh, Russell Westbrook leads the team in a rebound rate, 17.1%, 65 minutes, three-game sample size. But if I take him off, um, we see a bump for Thomas Bryant to go to 12.1. Just just from a reference, what was Bryant at? Bryant was at 10.3%. Uh, so now we take off Russell Westbrook, and that's going to move him to 12.1%. It's only 50 minutes. I think that 12% has a chance to get look a little bit closer to that 15% because, remember, there that uh, a lot of that sample size is from a game against the Orlando Magic, a tougher defense. I think in this uh, particular game, Going against, <clears throat> excuse me, going against the Minnesota Timberwolves without Carl Anthony Towns, I think Thomas Bryant has a double double in him, and he's another guy that can shoot at a decent uh, percentage. I think Raul Neto is going to be more of a pass first guy generally. Uh, we saw 28 real points out of him yesterday, but I think 15 to 20 real points and maybe double digit rebounds is a realistic range of outcomes. And then you cut a, a couple blocks of steals in the mix. Uh, I think he has potential at 5.8K on FanDuel to be a 40 fantasy point player. I would take two of his last three games at this price point, 36.9, that game without Westbrook, and 42.6 a game yesterday against the Chicago 
uh, bowl. So I very much like these guys, particularly today on FanDuel, to give me a solid value core. Uh, and if I put all these guys in a lineup, I'm actually going to be left with $8,100. That's a ton of money to make some fun lineups. Uh, so maybe see what you can do with these guys. Of course, uh, all of this subject to change, card subject to change based on news that comes out. Uh, um, and I will adjust to that news on today's live stream. Please join me, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, right here on the channel. I'll be live. I'm not sure who, who will be my co-host today, but we'll try and have somebody to chop up this big Friday slate. Uh, we've been breaking viewer records on these live streams uh, all week, and I have high hopes. Maybe we start the season with a bang, um, and we uh, or start the year with a bang, uh, with a new uh, record. If you guys got anything else for me, Twitter.com slash Gundacker Sports. Otherwise, I'd love to see you in the RunDFS.com premium Discord uh, and uh, get yourself access to the spreadsheet. Love you guys. I hope you guys crush it tonight. Good luck. God bless and go win some money.